In this demonstration, we're going to have a look at the problem object. Once again, I'm logged in as the user Gina in the role of Service Desk Manager. On her default dashboard, I'm going to go ahead and click the Problems widget. This drills down to another dashboard that shows me all problems. A problem is an underlying cause of incidents, that is, loss of service. I'm going to go ahead and click in a work in progress. Let's have a look at the problem form. Like the incident, it walks me through step by step how to fill it out. Step one is identify and classify. Like an incident, I'm going to enter a short description and a more detailed description. I can click my little zoom tool to expand my rich text box. I'm also going to select a service and a category for my problem. You'll notice that the impact and urgency matrix is similar to that used in incidents. This time it applies to the problem itself. Under investigation and analysis, I can go ahead and start to record my work. Also, I can identify a CI affected by the problem. In step three, I can enter any workaround information and submit that workaround to the knowledge base as a known error. Buttons will also allow me to publish that known error to the portal. I can even tweet it on Twitter if I'm so inclined. The last step in filling out my problem form are root cause and resolution. These are important for future reference. Down on the tabs at the bottom, my journal tab keeps an audit trail of changes to the problem ticket. Problems can be associated with tasks. You'll notice too that problems can also be associated with one or more incidents. Here I've also got a change request associated with this problem record. Once a workaround is submitted to the knowledge base as a known error, it's available to other technicians. So problems not only serve as a record of the root cause analysis, they can also serve as knowledge articles for future reference.